Oh, howdy there, folks. Whole bunch of good news and bad news to share with you guys here today in this video. I got some very important things to show you in this video, and um, uh, this is in regards to several extremely popular stocks in the stock market as well um, that we got to get into. Now, if you're anything like me in terms of your personality and you have somebody come to you and they say, I got good news and I got bad news. What do you want first? I'm the type that's always like, give me the bad news first, okay? If, you, if you're like me, let me know <laughs> in the comment section. But I always want the bad news first. Like, just give it to me and then we can talk about the good news. So that's what we're going to do in today's video. I'm going to give you the bad news first. We're going to discuss that. Then we'll get into the good news, okay? And I have several different bad things to share with you in today's video and several different good things to share with you in today's video. Hope you guys enjoy this. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you that has subscribed to the channel. Thank you so much, okay? So AMD, starting right off, right off the bat here, AMD. So uh, stock's down around 4% after hours. We'll see where it trades at tomorrow. AMD's obviously a stock that's been devastated uh, for the past year. We all know that, right? It's been, um, you know, just bad, bad, bad. And when it comes to AMD, here's what happened. AMD warns, this happened after the bell today, AMD warns of third quarter revenue shortfall on weaker PC demand and supply chain issues. Holy smokes, man, supply chain, that's still an issue? Oh my gosh, okay. AMD also said its non-GAAP gross margin is expected to come in at around 50%, while it had previously expected gross margin to be closer to 54%. That's a massive difference in, in, in non-GAAP gross margin there. I mean, four percentage points, that's 400 basis points. Um, yeah, in, in terms of the stock market world, that's not a small amount. That's a insane, epic, massive amount, especially for a company that's as huge as a company like AMD is, okay? AMD issued preliminary third quarter results on Thursday that are well below its initial guidance. The company reported preliminary quarterly revenue of approximately $5.6 billion. It had initially said... They expect a $6.7 billion in revenue for the quarter, plus or minus 200 mil. Okay, so they missed by $1.1 billion in terms of their revenue. That is an epic disaster. 6.7 was the midpoint, okay? So to come in with 5.6 is just awful. This clearly shows that there's not just small issues with overall demand, right? Um, but there's massive issues there uh nonetheless right i mean we're talking about this is an epic miss an absolutely epic miss for amd here no bueno i mean no bueno at all now the thing that's extremely important for everybody watching this video right now to understand about this is amd was having unbelievable growth between not just their core business but also xilinx in that acquisition there so they went from this unbelievable just growth engine right reporting this was just their last quarterly results reporting all this phenomenal growth to now we're going to be in a situation that it is very very possible that amd's revenues flatline or dare i say potentially go down in 2023 for this company and when you go from this epic unbelievable growth to your revenues potentially going down, your stock price gets incredibly damaged. Now, the good news for AMD stock is a lot's already been hammered into that stock, but unfortunately, it might have a little ways to go still in, in this whole matter, okay? Now, when it comes to AMD, here's the situation. Analysts had expected this company to be in growth mode in 2023. Well, when you come in and you miss gross margin, but that's a non-GAAP gross margin too, uh, by 400 basis points. Then you come in and you report your revenue missed by $1.1 billion. Everybody starts to say, oh boy, okay, I don't know if this is really going to be a growth company in 2023 or not. Analysts were also expecting EPS to grow in 2023. When you come in with this bad of numbers, people are going to start looking and be like, I, I don't know. Are they actually going to grow in 2023? What's EPS looking like? Their gross margins falling? Revenue could potentially go down? In, in that sort of environment, that wouldn't be, um, let's just call it ideal whatsoever in regards to the earnings per share line. So this is this is a big development in kind of the AMD story here and everything that's going on there, okay? Now, if you were an AMD bull, which I might even end up eventually turning into an AMD bull. As of right now, I don't own this stock, but you know, it might go down a whole lot more and I might be uh, very tempted to start a position here on AMD very soon. So here's my outlook here. If you are looking to add AMD, I think you've honestly got six to 12 months to build a good size position. That doesn't mean you wait six months to start your position or something like that, but 
but I think there's going to be, you know, a lot of volatility in the stock, and I don't think it's going to go on any epic run for probably six to 12 months outside of the entire NASDAQ making an epic run or something like that. Um, outside of that, I think you've got six to 12 months to build a good size position, anywhere between probably 50 and let's call it $80 a share for this stock and um, build yourself a position that's in a, a good place for the next few years. Because the way I'm looking at this is I think all analysts, because of these numbers, they're all gonna have to end up downgrading the stock likely, and they're all gonna have to bring down their expectations in a substantial way. The people that were already somewhat bearish on AMD are gonna get a whole lot more bearish now that they just reported this awful of a miss. And the people that are bullish are gonna have to bring down all their expectations as well because they're looking at it and like, oh my gosh, this is such a huge miss. Like, you know, we gotta bring down our numbers in this situation, right? So that's gonna all play out. You know, that's going to be a multi-month kind of situation there. So yeah, if you are long-term bullish on AMD or you're somebody that's wanted to get in this stock, I think you've got the next six to 12 months to build yourself a good sized position while this business is going to be in a, a tougher place um, than anybody had ex expected, right? And um, that's going to be kind of that. If you're hoping for short-term gains there, you know, outside of the NASDAQ just going on a beast rally run or something like that, I think you, you know, you, it's going to take some time to kind of, you know, wash this whole situation out, okay? Now, this spreads further than AMD, and this is very important, okay? This is going to spread way bigger than AMD. This is also going to spread to stocks like NVIDIA. Look at NVIDIA after hours, down around 3%. If AMD and NVIDIA, they're very similar in terms of like if their businesses are flying high and everything's going great. It's usually for both businesses. It's not like one company's doing great and the other company's doing horrible. That's not just how it works for these companies. So if you're also looking to build a position in NVIDIA, I think you've got the next six to 12 months to build a pretty good sized position. If NVIDIA is a type of stock you want to build a position in, right? Uh, you know, I think they're going to be in a tough spot as well for the next six to 12 months. Intel, <laughs> this is going to spread to Intel as well, uh, which is unfortunate because that stock's been uh, just obliterated. I mean, you know, a lot of people looked at that as like the safer of these plays and it's been hit almost as hard as AMD and NVIDIA. That's the craziest part of this whole situation. Uh, but Intel's down about 3% after hours. You know, Intel's going to be in a tough spot as well for the next six to 12 months, to be honest. The good news with Intel is you obviously get that big, huge dividend in the meantime, which is uh, pretty sweet, right? Whereas AMD and NVIDIA aren't really focused on that at all, obviously. Um, you know, let's just call it very minuscule. So that is going to play out there. It, it could even hit stocks like Micron, MU. This could even hit stocks like Apple, to be honest, because people might say, okay, if, if demand is that weak for AMD and NVIDIA, demand's got to be going to be weak for, for Apple as well. We'll see how all that plays out, right? But that people start drawing these conclusions, whether they're right or wrong, they start saying, well, this company's weak, so it's got to be this company, this company, this company, and things like that, okay? So that's going on out there. Very short-term negative thing. However, if you're a long-term buyer of those companies, you got the next six to 12 months to build good-sized positions in some companies you might love for the next five to 10 years, right? Next piece of bad news here is WTI continues to climb, okay? Now, the one thing I'll say about this, right? You know, WTI's had several positive days in a row here. When it comes to WTI, this is off the back of that OPEC decision there, right? But I think, you know, of course, when OPEC makes a decision like that, we're going to cut a certain amount of uh, barrels of oil, that's going to play out for a few days, right? But we're going to see now if there's a lasting rally there in WTI. And you'll see that over the next few weeks. Of, you know, you're going to get that initial move down, or move, move down in the barrels of oil, right? And move up in the price. But if this is a long ter longer term thing, you'll see... WTI continue to move up over the next few weeks. So I think WTI, it should be on, honestly, everybody's uh, tracker or watcher, wherever you watch stocks on, for the next few few days at least, if not few weeks. And we'll see if there's any real follow through here. You know, oil is not usually strong going into winter time. So this is a little bit of an abnormal situation, but with the OPEC decision there, obviously it's moved up oil. We'll just see how lasting it is. And you'll, you'll find that over, over the next few trading days and uh, honestly over the next few weeks there, okay? Now, next piece of bad news is good old Tesla Myosa continues to fall and get hit and get hit and get hit, okay? It's uh, now down over 40% year to date at this moment. The good, I mean, you know, it's still quite a ways away from the low it reached kind of back around May, June, somewhere around there when the stock was around 210. So, you know, you could look at that and say, well, man, maybe it's going back to that place or, you know, it's, it's in a, a moment in time that, 
you know, it's, it's, it's in the Twitter situation right now, okay? Now, the reason the Twitter situation matters so much to Tesla stock, right, is because this is a situation where people feel like Elon's going to sell a bunch of Tesla stock to make this acquisition of Twitter, which looks more and more realistic, like that's going to be a, something that goes through, right? And that's what people are fearing around this. Also, it just creates a big distraction and kind of circus around this, right? Which people don't want to see either. And so that's why t Tesla stock price is in just a very tough moment in time. And the more probable the Twitter acquisition is, I think the more likely uh, Tesla stock is to just have a tough time in the short term, right? Now for the long-term bulls who might be looking to buy Tesla stock, I'm not, I, I'm a holder of Tesla stock. I'm not a, a buyer of Tesla stock, right? Unless it falls under 200, I might be, uh, change my plans a little bit there. But in terms of the people that might want to buy more Tesla stock, hey, you know, you might love this whole Twitter saga and situation there because obviously you're getting an opportunity to buy Tesla stock for much cheaper than it probably would be in any other situation but this twitter situation is definitely dragging out it was interesting i saw i saw a comment i can't remember who this was from or where this was from oh no, no i think it was on twitter i think it was actually on a post elon must have or something like that and basically this person was you know complaining about tesla stock's volatility and how he's sick of it and, and those sorts of things and my my thought process around that was man if you're complaining about volatility in tesla stock you are not in the right stock like don't matter what Tesla's going to continue to be a volatile stock for years to go in the future. Obviously, it's not nearly as volatile as it once was, but this is a type of stock that's going to continue to be, you know, go through some crazy peaks and troughs, peaks and troughs throughout time. It's that sort of stock. And uh, one, one minute it's going to think it's the end of the world for the company. The next minute you'll think, you know, it's going to be the, the biggest company in human history. So that's Tesla stock. Don't cry over the volatility in that. If you own any individual stock, there's massive volatility. And especially in a stock like Tesla. Like, that's just the way it is, okay? Uh, the chef, bad news for the chef. So obviously this stock just hit a new 52 week low here today uh based upon what i see here i think and this is just in regards to stock price nothing with the company fundamentals uh i believe there's uh, definitely some short ladder attacks going on here not hard to do at all in a stock like the chef shorts have all this is a heavily shorted stock and they hold all the cards right now right from the long side we got to wait to see margins come around cash flow come around profitability come around all those sorts of things which is going to take you know several months before we can begin to see that play out so right now there's no news around the company and so there's nothing going on there and based upon the pricing action uh, there's no doubt in my mind that this is uh, some short ladder attacks going on and I'm just letting them do what they want to do right now. You know, do whatever you want to do. Um, you know, I have some bigger buys coming up. Let's just put it that way. I'm not going to, you know, say when those buys are coming. I don't want to give them any clues there, but I definitely have some bigger buys coming. I'm going to let them do whatever they want to do with the stock for now. And um, that, that just is what it is. There's, there's, the, the shorts are in 100% full control of that stock price right now. The longs, we don't, we don't have it at all. We will have it in 23, but right now, no. Don't even dream about having control of that. We won't have it uh, this year. This is, this is the shorts year for this stock. Uh, 2023 will be a little different when it comes to that whole situation, okay? Now, to start getting into the good news, we have a lot of good news going on as well, okay? So, I don't know if you see the Jack Jackson place today. Oh my gosh, okay? If I pull up the stocks that were green that I own today, there's two that stick out like a sore thumb, as they say, right? Uh, Avant Brands up almost 8% today, and then Planet up over 30%. Those are my only two plays in the Jack Jackson space. And uh, epic, epic move. So basically what happened is the White House announced that basically they are starting to make the moves that I would say are lining up toward eventual federal legalization. They're basically letting a bunch of folks that were imprisoned uh, for this product over time go, which is um, you know quite a, quite a few people. Let's just put it that way. Uh, they're also basically the, the White House wants the uh, you know the regulatory bodies to look into this and, and basically change the classification of this product, which the classification is ridiculous. It's put in with the most hard extreme products in the world, which is absolutely ridiculous. Anybody that's done study for more than like five minutes on the subject knows that uh, this. <laughs> should not be grouped into those uh, other things or even remotely close to that. So there's several steps in the right direction that people want to see. And if you are thinking about a day of federal legalization, the steps that happened right, you know, shortly before the bell today in, in, in the market, right, those steps are in the right direction toward eventual 
federal legalization, which, you know, is, is eventually someday coming. It's just like, you know, government takes forever on this stuff. And I mean, if we had a popular vote in the United States to legalize or keep keep not legalized, I guarantee you we'd, we'd win legalization like that. But that's not the way that things work in the United States of America. And uh, it's a process. And it's been a long, drawn-out process. But today is steps in the right direction and momentum in the right direction to hopefully getting to that place, okay? And so that's why those stocks all, all pop today. And we'll see if there's carry through. There definitely could be carry through for the next uh, few trading days, if not the next several weeks. And the reason there could be uh, potential carry through in, in this whole situation is keep this in mind, okay? Uh, this news just came out shortly before the market closed today, okay? So a lot of folks didn't even get to digest this information, right? And so I just think that's something to kind of keep in mind there. Like a lot of folks did not even, and that's why you didn't see volumes necessarily go crazy on this, right? It was kind of a slow move. Like, like you know, you saw the move in the planet. You would have thought this had to be crazy volume, right? 30% plus move. Like what? That's insane, right? It had to be like a 10x volume. No, it was barely over 2x volume for planet here today. And it made that sort of move. Now, imagine if this news had come out in the morning and had the whole day to kind of digest this information. Imagine what the volume would have been in a stock like the planet, right? And this will definitely start attracting some of the short-term players and, and short-term traders as well, right? A stock like Avant didn't even go average volume today and still made that sort of move, right? So, you know, we'll see what happens here, but I'm like, Avant made almost an 8% move on volume that wasn't even. It literally wasn't even what the volume normally is, right? But all of a sudden, people are like, wait, Jack you know, Jack Jackson plays, wait, what's going on here? Okay. You know, and, and there was also a move there. So we'll see where the continuation is. All I can tell you from a fundamental standpoint is I'm happy with things moving in the right direction there. Okay. Which is obviously what this industry needs in a, in a massive, massive way. Okay. Now more good news. Oak futures continue to be in a, um, you know, let's just call it a crashing place. So there, it seems like oat futures aren't coming back and let's hope that stays that way to be quite frank. Oat futures started going crazy in the summer of 2021 and this destroyed margins for companies like an Oatly for instance. And uh, you know, based upon what I'm seeing with what's going on with oat futures, watch the margins for Oatly in Q4 and in all of 2023. I think margins are going to expand rapidly between them have scaled their factories simultaneously with oats coming down so much in price. It's like Oh my gosh, it's two just great situations. And on top of that, the third component of this is trucking rates have come down massively. So it literally has three insane epic things and just watch the margins. Watch the margins uh, for Oatly you know, in Q4 2023. Oh my gosh, okay, I can't wait. I can't wait for that. That's a whole situation that plays out there. They've had everything work against them as a lot of small caps have to be quite frank, okay? Next thing. This matters in a significant way. Look at this. Freight prices on, on one key route from Asia to the West Coast are now down more than 80% from last year. So basically, if you have to ship any product overseas, it is dramatically cheaper now than it was literally just three months ago, six months ago, 12 months ago. And we're talking in a, you know, in a pretty intense way. Container rates went to insane prices okay now the smaller company you are in the larger product you got to ship overseas the more you've been damaged by this the more you've been hurt by this whole situation right companies like an apple for instance i mean gosh you know that even hit them a little bit but think about apple they're, they're shipping product from china to the u.s right for instance well apple's selling airpods that are like this big like you could fit a lot of dang boxes of airpods in a container right iphone apple's been very smart over the years and they shrunk the size of their iphone boxes in a massive massive way and uh that's very intelligent of apple because you can fit a whole lot of iphones in uh one of those dang containers let's just put it that way so companies like that haven't had it as bad the smaller companies are the ones that really got hammered by this in any company that's sending bigger products they're the ones that get hit the worst in that whole situation, right? And it just absolutely wrecked margins for these companies. That's all going away now. And um, keep in mind, we're still even in elevated ranges when it comes to container. For so if you are thinking like, that's it, like there could be another, uh, let's call it shoot a drop when it comes to container prices, actually. That's the most amazing part of that is 
we're still considered elevated. Even with prices down 80% from last year, we're still considered elevated <laughs> when it comes to pricing of these ocean car carriers. So that's crazy to kind of think about there. That's great news if you own any company that has to ship product overseas, okay? And if you look at this as well, this is for trucking rates, excluding fuel surcharge, uh, surcharges. And if you look at this, we've come down massively, obviously. This is great news. So if you are a company that has to transport any physical product, you know, you got wrecked. You got wrecked basically starting in, in kind of mid-2021 all the way through the beginning of this year in 2022. But over the past six months, you know, the chart the chart's pretty self-explanatory. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to read that and uh, realize as far as trucking rates, they've come down massively. Now, do keep in mind when it comes to trucking rates, you know, we're still elevated from where we were prior to Rona. So if you think like things can't come down more. It's definitely possible. I'm not banking that in, but this is, this is stuff that's so meaningful to companies margins that I don't even think a lot of people realize how impactful this is going to be for a lot of companies margins in 2023. And, um, never mind that a lot of companies have gone up on price of their product, right? Because they got so hit by things that like, you know, shipping your product overseas by things like obviously trucking rates and things like that. So a lot of companies obviously went up in price over the last, let's call it six months. Well, now the cost of doing business is coming down substantially. Do you think they're going to magically just drop price now? That's not going to happen. So what's going to happen is actually margin expansion for a lot of these companies in 2023. And I don't want to say it's for all of them, but for a lot of these, especially smaller cap companies that got wrecked this year in 2022, they're actually going to see massive margin expansion in 2023, which is where you get into the stock market of the haves and have nots for 2023 and the stocks that are going to be still going through tough times in 23 and the stocks that are going to be like, our business is in a better place than it's ever been. Look at our margins are exploding right now. Um, so we're going to see that uh, as, as 2023 rolls around. And Wall Street, hasn't, Wall Street hasn't priced any of that in. I'm talking 0%. And wait till they see the numbers on that. Wall Street's still very wrapped up in this negative cycle. And they've been very focused on the kind of the large cap stocks, which they should be, to be quite frank. Um, but that's been the where their focus is it. But wait till these companies start reporting that other smaller companies margins increasing and not just increasing, but increasing in a rapid clip. Wow, that is gonna that's gonna get very interesting very very quickly in regards to that. So definitely good news as far as all that goes. Hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. Thank you so much for joining me as always. Thank you for being subscribed to the channel. If you ever want to say hello to me, you enjoy the, the the videos on the channel and whatnot. Say hello to me on Instagram. Send me a DM and also just so you know, this is crazy. On the new channel, Jeremy LeFay Makes Money, my new reaction channel, we just hit 15,000 subscribers already on that channel. So if anybody watches this channel and is subscribed over there, thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, much love as always. That's crazy that we hit you know that sort of number already. Um, so I appreciate everybody for joining me over on the reaction channel as well. Much love as always and have a great day.